Good Mulweni from a magnificent Cape Town. On say did the wonderful stories for you to he saw any Veskop, and all of them promised to bring you a slice of light. This week, as you can see, I'm flying solo. Missing you, Megan. No, I'm not. Who am I kidding? This is great. Where else could it be? But Kirsten Bosch. Selfs op a kouwdag so siri is dan het een woord om die plek te beskryf. Wow. First up, tickling taste buds and shaping futures with Cape Town's most innovative biscuit makers. Even Gogo, Wafula tell her in Hollywood, it's is a Kusega in film school for young people up in Zanz. And then, sleep us with Yolanda Magida and say, Peske for us, who on the following Christmas generation to rock with 3D animation. It started when that still small voice told her to buy a failing, dead ridden biscuit company for the princely sum of one rand. It ended with scrumptious cookies all over the nation and God as CEO. Adri, what is Kailicha cookies? This is a busy time for our work for the dames of Kailicha and for the living areas in Kaapstad. We learn how to learn to make cookies and hand pack in our fabric. And the reason why we do this is to take the dames in the house that are not necessary to be letterd, they are not school, they can not speak English, so they don't have a right to get in a position to get to work to get to work in a company. En dan leer ons hulle om koekies te handpak en handpak in ons fabriek. En hoekom ons te doen is die rechtige werkskeping is wat ons 40 dagen neem om te bak, vat een machine een dag. En dit is die groot verskil tussen wat ons doen en een normale koekiebesigheid. So dan vat jou personeel 40 dagen wat een machine in een dag so gedoen het. But you wouldn't change this, hoekom? In die hart van Kalitje Cookies, elke persoon, hulle kyk na tussen 5 en 7 afhankelijk is, wat hulle voer elke dag. En ons het so 2 jaar terug, toe was ons geforceer om te vraag, um, jy weet, wat is die verskil tussen met die dames van voor hulle hier begin werk het en na dit? En die, die meeste antwoorde wat ons uitgekry het is, dit is die eerste keer wat ek kan kos op die tafel sit vir my kinders, ek kan my kinders school te stuur, ek kan bekostig om klede te koop, en ek kan bekostig om my kinders warm te hou in een oordenkelijke huisie. En dit is die hart van wat ons doen. Um, is om mense in een positie te stel om na hulle en hulle families te kan omsien, dier die inkomste te verdien, en ook so doen die afhankelijkheid van staatsbevondsing um, te verminder. Want elke persoon wat mense in dienst kan neem, beteken hulle draad by tot die ekonomie. Now, I look around at your stuff, I'm all is doodgelukkig. Yeah. <laughs> Amper te gelukkig. <laughs> yeah. like, tell us, tell us how, in essence, how do, you get, how do you get that right? And two, tell us more about the, your stuff, like, and how has it changed their lives? So, what we do is, we have been a few years back, we say, you know, for your mamas, and I also, when I was a mom, what is your biggest wish? And it's just like in the middle of your children, from your kinders from your school, you have to be your kinders to be your kinders. En ongelukkig in die era wat ons leef, kry mamas nie daai geleentheid nie. Al die mamas werk, want jy nodig twee inkomstes om net te kan kop bo water hou in die ekonomie. Toe stel ons in incentive in plek. En die incentive was dat as jy jou 'n baksel vir die dag gedoen het, so ons het vir jou 'n quota koekies gegee wat jy moet bak. So dra jou quota voltooi is vir die dag, kan jy huis toe gaan en jy word vir die volle dag betaal. En da, dit was tweevoudig en Younes, uh, my mededirekteur, sy het eindelijk met die voorstel opgekom. En dit was eindelijk die draaipunt van die bezigheid ook. Want dit er die dames gemotiveer om so vinnig as moendlik dier hulle waar te kom. Dit er die dames gemotiveer om die targets wat ons altijd gehad het, wat hulle min van hulle kon het bereik, Ja, die dames even skielik ten 12 uur, 1 uur, 2 uur en nie meer al begin bereik. Um, en dit het hulle ook in een positie gestel om hulle kinders nie deur te stuur na oma toe om te kyk in Ooskapie. Co-director Eunice remembers the early days. Kala kot sazi li na ne li ngin ngin, dat fika be ba hi 14, I think, ja. And then die kampanya, sen ngin ngin ka kulung elot, kaya sa sine klein sa zimbalwa. 
And then I think Basenze cookies as the 1,000 it was a wow to us. Sometimes I see seven and climb three hours because I see I'm seven zunga condemned by good. But Baba, Baba, if you are alone, the one Baba appreciated and no Babes and seven zing. And then Sayasi Kule and works if Mana e clients like Southern Sun, Garden Courts, Sayongi production, Yeti in Yuga, but Ayan and the Essence, like a Baba seven are born, like Bengana land drains in Doya, Baba seven are born, and then Ipele mean Babanga like Babanga seven is like to achieve. Something for the day, you understand? Like, okay, you've got production of the day. If we achieve it, so by being in London, I may say, and for the sake of seven by the same seven zingo. But I had been on bad train, okay, but then they targets, then they bring out the incentives, there's T lessons, I parcels, the crossalos, anything. So, yeah, I get to be going, and then going to start one by a little set of targets, you know, and get EE bang at IO. And then did you okay from Monday to Friday? If Kang will be absent, then we should target let's say 2,000 for, for a week. And then on the And then on a Friday, so it starts from Monday to Thursday. So on a Friday, you can go home early. So you can be able to do it. So you can be able to do it. So you can be able to do it. achieve whatever you can produce and then see deliver for the clients. Behind the invoice, you can be able from Monday to, to Friday. And the public holidays and pangil, and the night shift in my pangil, which is upper Ben Pangal, like when I previous Ben Pangal. So I had enough time to spend the family, and especially when I'm done on Dombazan. Audrey's journey with the business started with a job interview. And stopped to see my Madetta's Kali Chokokis. And that was four domikis, on my tafel, three ice winkies, what was opgebakken. En toe ek my voete insit in Kali Chokokies, toe kry ek hierdie prentjie van het Dyson Dames Plus, wat bezig is om te bak, en my hele life het onder vlees geraak. En toe besef ek, weet jy wat, dit is wat die Heere my geroep het om te doen in my lewe, is om rechte verskil te maak in mense se levens. Aha, now when you met them financially, how was Kali Chokokies doing? Wel, dit was een sikkel in die bezigheid van dag 1, want wat ons 40 dae neem om te bak, vat een machine een dag. En as jy kyk na die financiële impact van een machine gebakte koekie en hoeveel die selfde koekie jou kos om om te handpak, kyk jy na verskil van tussen 73 cent tot, jy weet, laak 40, 50 cent. So mens is nie bereid om meer te betaal vir hand gebakte koekie as een machine gebakte koekie nie. In 2013, toe die bezigheid al 2,5 miljoen randse verliese gelei, sonder enige vorm van staatsbevondsing, en toe roep die directeer my in, en hulle sit vir my boks tussies op die tafel, en hulle sê vir my, Audrey, hy wil jou hart uit, Ons maak die bezigheid toe. En een paar maanden voor het die heren al in my geese saakje gesit van ek moet vir hulle offer maak vir die bezigheid. En toe gaan ek huis toe in ons bid en die heren geet toe vir my Leviticus 26 vers 10. And it's that you will be a blessing out of your overflows and your bonds will be overflowing, that you will be a blessing to others out of your overflow. En dit was een ongelooflike scripture en belofte vir my, want ons het lewe ons. Ons het wolwe wat kom klop vir geld. Wat een ongelooflike belofte op die bezigheid. En die volgende dag, toe gaan ek, ons offer dit die eenrand, ons tos bezigheid, ons huis, alles op die lijn gesit, om het te kan doen. En ek het letterlijk 2,5 miljoen rand moes betaal vir die bezigheid wat 100.000 rand waard was. So, meester rekenmeester sal sê, moet dit nooit ooit doen nie. En even ons eie rekenmeester Louie het vir my gesê, ah ah, Audrey, nee, jou kopietje geloos, asjeblief, moet dit nie doen nie. En toe sê die heren vir my, jylle moet nog iets anders doen. Jylle moet my vertrouw in die bezigheid, doen dinge my manier. En een daarvan is om te taaf. En toe vraag vir die heren, maar hoe taaf jy as jy verliese maak? Toe sê vir my, geef vir my tiende van jy verliese. En dit is wat ons vandag een af gedoen het. En die heren het die bezigheid nog so ver gedra, laat elke maand ons kan salarisse betaal, elke maand kan ons een skuldeisers terug betaal. En dit is nie makkelijk nie, nou nog as jy na die financiële boeken kyk, dan denk jy, hoe hou ons die bezigheid staande? Maar ons doen, maar ons doen het met God aan ons kant. En ek het van die begin af gesê, weet jy, ek is nie die CEO van die bezigheid nie, die heren is. En ek is een van die mense wat eindelijk in ons prayer room wat boe is, het ek my meetings gegeven wat ek my bezigheidsplanne voor hier is die voete neerle. En ek praat met hom asof hy daar is. En ek le my requests vir hom neer. En ek sê, jyre, maar nou sien nie, ons nodig X, Y en Z. En ek kan dit nie aan my eie kracht doen nie. So, tree asjeblief in. 
Jy weet, in baie keer, en denk jy mense, weet jy, dit is met een miracle, en jy maak jy bankrekening die volgende oomlik oop, en daar is al die geld. In ons levensverhaal het nog nooit so gewerk, jy. Glad nie. Um, ons levensverhaal was, dat die heren vir ons weisheid en inzicht gegee het, om te weet wat om te doen. Om dieren oop te maak vir groter bestellings, om in klientese harte te werk, om eenmalige bestellings, jy weet, in te sit. So, in ons levensverhaal het het nog altyd gepaard gegaan met, jy, jy moet jou deel ook bijdra, jy moet jou deel doen. En as jy jou deel goed doen, gaan ek my deel doen. So, ons story is een van harde werk en geloof, van die twee gaan hand aan hand in ons, in ons levensverhaal. <laughs> jy kan nie die een sonder die ander een doen nie. <laughs> Audrey shares final insights on her path with God and cookies. Ons bezigheid is Godse bezigheid. En eendag is ek in die hemel kom, gaan ek vir my drukkie gee, of om sê, bye bye, bye dankie, dat ek so bevoorig was, dat ek aangestel was as die leier, dat hy my gekies het as die leier van hierdie bezigheid. Want dit het vir my, my leven perfect gemaakt hier op aarde, as ek het so kan stel. Dit het vir my purpose gegeen, dit het vir my een voethold gegeen om met ander mense kan, te kan deel. God leef vandag nog. God kan vandag nog wonderwerke doen. Dit is nie net in die bybel nie. Mm. 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 I could eat those cookies all day, but I can't. Because if I did, then Serena would need a wider lens for the camera, and the producers would have to buy me a whole new wardrobe. <laughs> Coming up, a film school where art gives life. The Cape Town film industry offers all sorts of out-of-the-box job opportunities for young people. Ongelukkig gaan die mense van ons jong mense glad nie filmschool bekostig nie. But we visited one place which opens all kinds of doors. Katie, we know that a lot of the, the Cape Town film industry is vast, it's huge. There's a lot of productions happening, a lot of Americans coming through. But you're an American who came here for a different reason and yet you stayed. Take us through that journey. Honestly, I came to South Africa on a two-week mission trip. I went into the township of Kaimundi, uh, and I came back uh, the next year and shot a short film. While I was shooting that film, I had a young man who approached me and said that he was a filmmaker, uh, that he didn't have the skills or the tools, he just knew he was a filmmaker. And I left that experience haunted by the idea that someone would have a, a God-given vision for their life that they couldn't achieve for some reason. As Katie began teaching part-time classes, she learned more about local students. One of the things that I learned when we went into the township of Kayamundi was that, um, one, that story can be used as a form of healing from trauma. Uh, and I also learned how important it is to have Africans tell their own stories. Um, their voice is very different than mine. So I can come in with a particular um, thought or look on how a situation is, but my students come from a very different angle. And so it's important to empower students. It's important to train them with the skills to be able to, uh, to tell their own stories. But the community classes faced many challenges. We were doing battle with a lot of external forces, uh, whether it be gangs or shootings or alcoholism. Uh, and what we really learned was that if we could remove students for a few years, give them the training, help with life skills, create a spiritual environment where they can grow and, and, and grow and deepen their faith, then we could actually have students graduate from the program uh, and feel like they can join the industry uh, and really be successful. So she founded the residential college, Film School Africa. All of our students live on campus and they learn everything from screenwriting and producing to uh, on-set camera and sound to editing and post-production. Uh, and we really try to invest in, in who they are along the way. Uh, and give them as much guidance and input as we can. And in the third year, we connect students to internship opportunities so that they can plug into the industry. Because uh, as you said, there's a, a huge industry uh, in South Africa. And I think most people don't know how, how much potential is out there 
uh, for a guy who can hold a boom pole, you know? And I just think that's a powerful thing to be able to equip someone with, with skills so that they can change, generationally change the future of South Africa. Now, on that point, uh, you talk about your students. Tell us about the type of students who come to Film School Africa. A lot of students from township backgrounds, but really students from all over South Africa. We have a student from, from Madagascar here. We've got a student next year who's coming in from the Congo. It's a beautiful representation of South Africa coming together and being able to work together and connect. And what do the students say? I'm starting to believe in myself more, and I know that I also have people who support me. So this is really inspiring, and I also want to help the school that also helped me. Yeah, I've been school. In the end, I'm born now. I'm not see fame. I'm not support like city band because talent is not one song. See just song because next year alone, I'm feeling I'm seven. Song is set up feeling. See, I join. See, I'm not one. I'm a band of talent is not one. See, I support and I set and I sell and I. So, Nantana Zona, as on as in Noma's Fumani or Kawakwezi University, cause of Tiwana University, Tundus, Pedro Bombak, Apa, sing or sing a female finance to Venice. So, so yeah, Eona Nuni, Yanting, Mosluganes and the Italian in the whole yeah. For Katie, the students are her greatest inspiration. They have voices that are that are that need to be heard. Um, they have so many different skills and talents, um, but more importantly, they're really incredible people. And I think when, when we get to know each other and when we connect uh, cross-culturally, uh, I think that we start to understand so much more about what we could become together. And it's really, really powerful. I want my students to work so that they can start to figure out what more about what they want for their own future and for their children. I want them to feel like they can care for their families into the future, and I think we'll all be better because of it. Marie explains the spiritual aspects of the college. You know, beyond just giving our students a skill, for me, what's really, really important is the, the health of their souls, and I want to spend eternity with them. And so really the, there's a very, very strong focus, um, both for myself and Katie, into their relationship with God and walking every day with Jesus. And, you know, really just focusing on discipleship and helping our students to find healing from things that have really been traumatic in their lives. And to know that they can come to Jesus um, with those things and be able to really find um, healing and life and a future with him. I feel like it's, this is what God told me to do. <laughs> and I had lots of arguments with God about not being the right person and not having, not, not having the right abilities myself. And he cl told me very clearly that he wanted me to use the tools that I had. Uh, and so when I came, all of a sudden I realized, you know what, I actually can do this. I have a great love for people and I have a great love for film. And, and then each step as it's unfolded before us, uh, a little, each a little more scary than the next, you know, he continues to provide those things too. So, you know, here we sit on a beautiful campus uh, in Somerset West. Who would have this, this, is, this is all God. <laughs> this is all God. Some fun, fresh content. The 3D animation of Superbook is sweeping young minds across the land. Season one has already screened on SCBC to great acclaim. It stands out in captivating children's excitement and imagination with the power of his word. Yolanda, talk us through the landscape in terms of faith-based content for children. There really isn't a lot out there, and that's why Superbook fits the, the bill and actually quite fits the, 
the, the gap. What makes Superbook special is that it speaks the language that kids understand, um, high quality animation that they are used to, that it's in par with everything that is out there. Like Superbook is like an ecosystem. We actually want to embed the Bible in the social framework. We've got the Sunday school curriculum, we've got the app, uh, we've got the uh, school programs. Um, so anywhere where kids are involved, we actually want to make the Bible exciting um, and also to experience it like never before. How important is it for children to connect with God at a very early age? I I think building a spiritual foundation, formation in kids is, is critical. Uh, and it's difficult as an adult. <laughs> uh, we've got a past that we need to deal with, we've got preconceived ideas that we hold on to. Whereas with children, that is really easy because they still have the sense of wonder and a huge belief that everything is possible. You bring in Christ to the, to the nation's kids through this program. So what excites you about Superbook? One of the elements that I really love, um, that I think sets Superbook apart, is the historical videos that we've put together that actually look into archeological facts and, um, and studies that have been done um, uh, about the stories in the past. So what we want kids to know is that the Bible stories that they read about, that they hear about, these are things that actually took place. And I think having that knowledge actually gives them confidence to share the gospel. And so for me, that's what sets Superbook apart. Fantastic answer. Yeah. What has the response been like from kids? There's this favorite story that I have of a little girl and she watched Superbook DVDs and she started asking her father if she can invite some friends of hers. And from that, she started a life group. One of the things that her father uh, mentioned as a condition that she needs to invite people who are not saved, who don't know Christ. And that worked out well for her, whereby she invited a group of girls that she knew who were peers, and she showed them the, the Superbook DVDs right there, very simplistically, she was evangelizing. Um, and that's the magic and the impact of Superbook. What is the dream for this series in South Africa? One word, revival. <laughs> we need revival, we want revival. Um, the, the dream is to have God use this as a resource to, to, to reach uh, the nation of South Africa, to have his word written in people's heart, um, just for that heart to be revived, um, to have miracle signs and wonders starting to happen again, um, and to have kids steer that and being in the forefront of that. How exciting would that be to have eight-year-olds, uh, uh, you know, exhibiting signs, miracles and wonders and, and leading in that. Um, and I think for me, that's the dream. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. As you know, where you have to make a cookies, go to our Facebook page. There you'll find a clip of my exclusive behind-the-scenes biscuit tour. Yes, it was delicious. And yes, I'm going on a diet for season two. So right now, it's goodbye from all things bright and beautiful Kirsten Bosch. Thank you so much for sharing this week with me. Last week, I was going to say goodbye. Until then, I'm going to say goodbye.